I recently attended a keynote of the Swiss-born British philosopher Alain de Botton and the British-American motivational speaker Simon Sinek. Both events took place in Amsterdam and maybe you were there too. Now these two speakers have one major thing in common. They both spoke without visuals to back their story and to rely on. And no, not a 20 minute TED on, but a one hour keynote. Really, I had almost given up the idea it was done in keynote land. Welcome in a new episode. Break a leg, a look behind the scenes of public speaking, a speaker's podcast from the Queen of Speech, Janka Flerakers. Being an actress in theatre, it was a great relief noticing that an audience can still be inspired and fascinated by the simplicity of a human talking. But what looks simple isn't that simple at all. Most speakers are not able to deliver an excellent performance without a PowerPoint or any kind of visual. Reason? It takes a lot more work studying the material, practicing the delivery, tapping into talent than most professional speakers are willing to invest. In my work as a speaking mentor and founder of Thought Leaders Academy, my speakers mostly practice without a PowerPoint. In my philosophy, they must be able to deliver their message without visuals. So, let's analyze what makes the Botton and Cynic succeed in their performance and how you can get there too. What do you need to be a non-PowerPoint speaker? Well, frankly, you need the same qualities as when you speak with PowerPoint, but they must be at 100%. You are no longer able to hide behind your visuals. All eyes will be on you and not on that moving image you use to distract and misguide your audience. Talking without a PowerPoint means you need to work harder to gain that trust and approval of your audience. That's it. So, stop being a lazy speaker. Stop using your audience as an excuse. And use visuals for what they are really intended to. The master speaker is he or she who is able to fascinate an audience with and without PowerPoint and props. This means, one, rehearse in your dreams. You have to know your keynote by heart, inside out and outside in. Knowing your keynote is not the same as knowing your topic of expertise. A keynote is a structured script with a clear outline, storytelling and purpose, meant to inspire, motivate and inform an audience. Your knowledge should go far beyond your keynote. But when speaking, you must be able to strictly follow and maintain the structure and content of your keynote during your performance. And if you go off-road, you know perfectly how to get back on track and keep time. So, rehearse your keynote in your dreams. 2. Keep your cool. An audience doesn't intimidate you. You can be nervous, have some stress... But that will not make you hesitant. You will not get a trembling voice and your body is in control. You are in control of your inner critic too. Keeping your cool during speaking means you've worked on your emotional intelligence level. 3. You just love rhetorics. You are a verbally strong speaker. You take care of the language you use. You know the power of storytelling, of style figures and well-formed sentences. You have studied rhetorics and you love it. 4. Make people fall in love with your voice. You have a great voice, almost radio proof. So be honest with yourself. If nobody has given you compliments on your voice in your life, or people told you they loved listening to you, think twice. Your audience needs to fall in love with your voice. A good voice comes with good pronunciation and an understandable accent. If your native dialect is too dominant, people will understand you less and lose interest. So learn how to use a microphone at your benefit. Seduce your audience with your sound. 5. You gotta move that body, baby. Be so aware of your body language. It's the only thing we can look at. Remember, move. And I don't necessarily mean jumping up and down the stage. If you are that kind of energetic person when you're off stage, be my guest. But if you're not, be truthful of who you are and explore how you can improve your moves and body language without acting out. So, okay. You might think, Janka, you're telling me nothing new. I already know this. And maybe you're right. 
But then this is my question. Are you performing at 100%? Challenge yourself. Next time when you're on stage, don't use your PowerPoint. Perform. See what happens. You will discover there is still a lot of work to be done, and that's okay. If you are a professional speaker, it's your job to spend hard work and a significant amount of time practicing, prepping, and becoming better in your craft as a speaker. Having a great story is absolutely necessary, but if you suck at telling it, you ain't worth the dime nor the audience. Meanwhile, I say goodbye and break a leg. I hope you enjoy this uh, first few episodes of Break a Leg. I would love to get your feedback. Just go to tlacademy.eu and you'll be able to contact us and see all the other episodes as well. If you have any friends who are also fellow speakers or aspiring speakers, please let them know about this show so they can also subscribe. Enjoy the podcast and meanwhile, break a leg.